It's about damn time I made this video and uh, I kind of just woke up acting a little so she's uh, looking like, uh, <laughs> you can definitely tell she just got woke up, well, startled up. That is the look of what the fuck. So anyways, the, the question I get asked a lot, um, it just in general when it comes to snakes is do they have personalities of their own or do they you know are they more than just instinctual animals and the answer to that is going to be a resounding yes so generally when they're raised a lot of people tend to see uh breeders raising these animals they see breeders mostly talking about uh, like, you know, the stats of the animals, the weights, the temperaments, the dispositions, um, and all the stuff needed to essentially raise your animal uh, optimally in a way to where, you know, if you're basically going to become a breeder, then that's what they're, that's the only thing they're talking about is, um, things and facts about the animals that doesn't necessarily relate to uh, them interacting with them, caring about them, and, um, you know, like getting to know them on an individual basis. So when it comes to the giants in particular, because that's generally what I specialize in, um, a lot of people don't usually see a lot of, uh, like wholesome interactions and stuff like that with the giants because they're big. Like most people, they're not going to want to sit there and mess with a, and of course she's doing all that because she's like, get off me, you just woke me up. <laughs> a lot of people aren't going to um, want to necessarily mess with an animal that is this size because their bites can not hurt. And yet, you know, most people are very, um, I want to say, just completely ignorant of the fact that they have dogs and other giant animals that can do uh, way more damage than uh, they can. But that doesn't mean that their bites are not uh, inconsequential when it comes to the severity of it. So, of course, you know, nobody wants to get bit. But the thing is, they're very reluctant to even want to, like, take a bite out of you in the first place. Like, the only time I've ever really seen anyone get bitten by them uh, on a more, like, <sighs> normal basis is, again, when you're watching breeders interact with them. And the only time they're interacting with them is when they are basically feeding them or cleaning them. So, they don't really, like, take them out to do much with them besides maintenance. Whereas like if you have an animal like mine where they're taken out, they're uh, taken to places, they're interacted with constantly, they're raised by that one person and they've only known, you know, positive interactions with people, uh, constant, just like, uh, you know, you sit there and talk to them. Like I'll talk to my girls all the time you know, they can hear that stuff. They don't hear it like on a, they don't hear the sounds on the air, but they do pick up uh, vibrations whenever we do talk to them. They do recognize when someone that they trust is talking to them and they can react to it. I've had plenty of uh, videos showing proof of that when it comes to like acnology or even Ori and whatnot, like when I talk to them, you can see her eyes uh, dilate. You, uh, I'll be talking to her, she'll come up to me and everything. It's like they recognize who they trust. They recognize who they form bonds with. Um, so, you know, like when people get these animals, they don't, they usually always only see them in a um, money-making uh, aspect like oh man like you'll see people that don't even have names for animals they just get them and they're just like I can't wait to pair this animal with this and blah 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 and all this stuff and it's like that's the only thing you generally see people doing these days with like pretty much like any reptile um 
you'll have a lot of people that are just on there. Like they'll talk about like how they love snakes and stuff like that. But and I see this very, very commonly. They'll talk about how much they love the snakes. They talk about like just having them as a joy. But then the first thing they do when they actually get one, not too long after, like maybe a year or so, uh, then they're getting more and they're like, oh, oh man, I can't wait to start breeding. And it's like, come on, man. Like, like, do you truly love the animal or do you just get them because you want to actually make money off of them? And that's the biggest thing is, like I said, when they're raised by, raised in the main mouthpieces that are out there are breeders, then the information you're going to get is going to mostly um, coincide with breeding them. So it makes it to where their intellect and other capabilities and other things they have to offer tends to not necessarily be shown because they're not being raised by people that have time to uh, bond with that individual animal. Like when you have like a hundred something animals and whatnot, you don't have time to sit there and deal with that. You literally are uh, pretty much just making, like you have to hire people and stuff. You you pretty much like, some, some are getting the experience of actually like having some like very small bonds with the animal just to see what they are. But uh, a lot of times they have to hire people to interact with these animals because that's the only interaction they're going to get from a person and you know you don't want to have an animal that's just like always biting and stuff so they have to have someone to at least uh you know get them used to people uh since they're not necessarily uh interacting with us constantly whereas like mine <laughs> yeah most people wouldn't be reaching in here with an almost 18 foot snake um especially like if she jumps up and stuff like that they're like oh we gotta have a hook for them and stuff and it's like you really don't need a hook for them if you're raising them to be desensitized to that type of stuff like of course she's all like ah oh, get off me and stuff like that but <laughs> i still interact with her and she's just like all right fine fine what do you want <laughs> but this is pretty much what I usually expect from them. I don't usually try to mess with her too, too much. Uh, but, you know, I can pretty much go in here at any point in time and just grab her out of here. She's so used to me getting her out that she's just completely uh, fine with me grabbing her out of there to take her out and stuff like that, because that's what she's used to. And when food does come, then it's like, oh, this is food time. Like, they end up having to end up, like, remember that sometimes they get fed <laughs> and said it in a starving case but it's like they they're more used to me going in to interact with them in a positive manner versus uh you know be looking forward to food whereas like breeding animals they only get really like interacted with when it comes to food specifically so um there are a lot of uh, things that they can display when uh, they are able to uh, have someone in their life that will allow them to develop their personalities. And, you know, in this video, hopefully I'm showing you a lot of those cases where you can see a um, big difference between like a lot of people are like, oh, I wouldn't do that with a snake versus just seeing a snake interact in that manner. Because I have a lot of people who's like, oh, I wouldn't trust a snake doing that. And it's like, well, then you don't generally know your animal or you're not giving them enough of a chance to actually show that they are capable of being more than just an, an instinctual beast. So, and it's like that with anything. Like, you know, if you basically raise any animal with very little human interaction and it's not always positive and it's always just feeding, then that's how they're going to react. So, you know, give them more of a chance to show what they have to offer if you actually are raising them with love and with care and you will see a personality from these animals like they are absolutely magnificent best things ever but like i said you gotta watch from people that are raising them that way instead of just breeders and like i said when it comes to the giants 
Nine times out of 10 is usually going to be someone that's breeding them because most people don't work with the giants uh, the way that I do in order to actually develop that type of personality with them.